Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me or you forgot about me, I am Nadia Colorista, I'm a self-taught artist. I'm excited about drawing human faces and in general I enjoy drawing pretty much everything. I also like creating abstract work, there is one example, or a mix of both styles, abstraction and realism. I know guys, you've been waiting for me forever. It's been a while since I posted my YouTube video last time. Thank you for your patience, but now I'm back and this time around I'm going to be more persistent and I'm going to share and explain my graphite and color pencil drawing practice. So I hope you guys stay with me and continue to support me on this journey. Now let's get started and get into the drawing practice. I start my drawing by organizing my workspace and getting my tools and materials ready. I like to work in a clean, organized and quiet space. Here I'm preparing the pencil, selecting the hardness that I want to use in this drawing. It's actually my standard choice, a few 2B pencils, 2-3 softer pencils, let's say from 5B to 10Bs. There are two pencil brands that I stick to, it's Faber Castell, I usually use their 9000 series, and the unfamiliar brand Casimir, a very affordable brand that I get from Amazon. I really really like this brand because it's affordable and you get a full range of hardness in one pack. Check out these pencils and other tools and materials that I'm using in this video. I attached the links in the description of this video. For more enjoyable experience and a better result, I prefer my pencils to be nice and sharp. I use a stationary knife with a fresh and sharp razor to sharpen them well. I prefer the tip of a pencil to be long, so it works longer. It's also practical for my drawing techniques. I can use the sharp tip for details and the side of the lead for shading larger areas. I prefer at least two pencils of the same hardness so I don't have to get back to sharpening too often. In this video I'm using Strathmore 400 series smooth surface paper size 8.5 by 10 inches. For this practice I selected a beautiful reference, I really loved its delicate movement and sentimental mood, the way the hand touches the hair, the angle of the head, the shadow in the hair and the part of the face. I really like the composition of this photo. If you want to practice with me, this reference is available for free at the link at the description of this video. For the first stage of this drawing, which is construction the head, I'm going to use an original photo as it is, but for the further stages of drawing, starting with shading, I convert the reference from colorful to black and white. It'll make our job easier, because when there is no color, it's easier to see values. So I start by slowly and carefully exploring the reference and then making light marks defining the outlines of the head. I decide how big a margin I want to make around the head and I want to make sure that it's not too narrow or not too large. At the same time I determine the placement of the face and the hand on the page. So I'm going to stick to the photograph's composition and try to transfer it to the paper. At the beginning of drawing the head, we should not focus on the details, but rather on bigger forms. In our case, it's the silhouette of the head, of the face, the general forms of the hand and the hair. Here you see I'm stretching my arm, unfortunately I couldn't make it fit the size of the video frame, so sorry guys, you'll just have to settle for a partial view. I'm using a measurement method by using a pencil as a measuring tool. I hold it vertically between little and ring finger and slide my thumb to get the right size. I use a 2B pencil at the beginning, it's a quite soft pencil and there is a reason for it. Soft graphite is easier to remove and you are going to do it a lot, especially at the beginning stage, when a lot of gastral lines to be done. A soft pencil doesn't scratch the paper as much as the harder one would, so I just try to make marks really light and clean. And if I have to erase them, it won't mess with the paper. Let's explore how to measure from the photographic plan to the drawing. To do this, we must use vertical and horizontal guidelines. These guidelines will greatly assist us in determining the proportions of the face and the placements of features. 
we can transfer these vertical and horizontal lines from a reference plane to our drawing to see where one point of the face aligns with another. These guidelines will also help us determine the angles of various planes and lines in the drawing. For example, we can draw a vertical line through the tip of the nose to determine the angle of the nose ridge. Our brain may not always recognize the correct size or angle, but we can now see that the angle of the nose ridge is very close to vertical and slightly tilted to the right. Next, let's determine the angle of the face by finding the brow line. By drawing a horizontal guideline, we can see that the angle between this line and the brow line is slightly less than 45 degrees. While this information may not be precise, it provides us with a good starting point. Further measurements taken in this manner will yield more accurate results. Constructing the face is a lengthy process that involves constantly measuring distances and comparing them to one another in order to determine the correct angles and placement of each feature. It is important to find these angles in the directions of line segments in the outline of the face, hand and other features and to understand how they relate to one another. Initially, you may need to use many searching lines, but try to keep them clean, long and flexible rather than short and stiff. It is also helpful to explore positive and negative spaces. Both types of space are equally important in defining the correct shape and size of a feature. The process of constructing the face requires constant attention and accuracy. You have to compare and measure as many dimensions as possible. Keep checking the vertical and horizontal alignments and transfer the measurements from your reference to the drawing to see if certain points match in the same locations. Ideally, by the end of the construction phase, you should have a solid structure with verified proportions and ready to be shaded. And when you are checking the proportions, do not only focus on the inner details, but also switch between the general and the specific aspects.
I have added some more strokes to the hair and I feel ready to begin shading. I may refine some details later, but for now the blocking has enough information for me to proceed. However, you can keep adding more planes if you wish. I know some artists like to work out every single detail in their drawing before they shade. That is a great approach if you have the passion for it. Now, before I start shading, I convert my reference from color to grayscale. This helps me to see the values better without the destruction of color. I usually start shading with a 2B pencil and layer the midtones first. Even if we are 100% sure of the accuracy of our first stage, which is a block in, there is no guarantee that it will not need a few alterations here and there. So when I shade, I don't stop measuring, I continue doing it throughout the entire drawing process. On the way, if layering, I make sure I'm improving the drawing's proportions along with the values. The first stage is a light sketch that is not solid or concrete. It's a sort of floating 2D construction and it should be as close as possible to reality. If you see, for example, the tip of the nose in your drawing is a little bit too narrow, fix it. The lines are still light and easy to fix. This time the alteration lines should be solid and very confident. The more layers you apply, the more solid your drawing becomes and the more difficult it'll be to fix it. After applying the first light and transparent layer on the face, I proceed to the hair. I prefer to approach the hair with rough horizontal shading planes. I use the side of the pencil head that allows me to create broader strokes and more even layers. This way of shading creates a texture that I really like. Now I'm adding more details in the hair, creating a sort of design. Meaning, based on the reference, I emphasize some of the elements, the curvy lines of the hair, its movements, the darker areas, and the highlights. I'm outlining some of the lines, making them bold and dark. These lines are the barriers between the light in the face and shadow or the darkest values in the hair. It's where you find the most contrast. These lines also become sort of accents. My intention in drawing is not to create a photorealistic copy of a photograph, but rather an expressive drawing based on the reference. In this work, I'm not using a traditional shading approach where the darkest value is close to black. Here I'm using dark gray instead of black for the darkest value, as you see in shadows of the hair. I do create a border of the darkest value as part of the design, but I don't shade it as dark as it is in the reference. Now that the first light layer of shading is complete, I blend the entire drawing with tissue paper. This makes the shading into a nice and soft base and just makes the drawing look more appealing to me. After that, I'm continuing building up the values with softer pencils from 5B to 10B. 
in the darkest areas and with the 2B in the lights and mid-tones. With the pen eraser, I'm adding a few finishing touches such as highlights in the hair and a few light hair curls. After that, I clean up the space around the drawing with a kneaded eraser and sign in with the date of completion. Congrats guys, you've made it to the end. I hope it was helpful and you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section or DM me.